Good evening. This is All India Radio. I'm Tanvi Taneja and with me is Reshma Tiwari with the evening news. The headlines. Home Minister Amit Shah says center wants to make Jammu and Kashmir self-reliant and development will reach even the remotest areas. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman says Union budget has set the pace for India to become Atmanirbhar. First leg of budget session concludes. Both houses of parliament to reconvene on 8th of March. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to visit Tamil Nadu and Kerala tomorrow to launch several developmental projects. Second dose of COVID-19 vaccine administered to healthcare workers across the country. World Radio Day being celebrated across the globe today. And in cricket. India were 300 for 6 against England at Stumps on day 1 of the second test match in Chennai. Rohit Sharma scores 161. As the nation fights the COVID-19 pandemic, we begin this bulletin with a message of precaution to stay safe and protected by following these three simple steps. Wear a face mask, maintain do gaz ki duri for social distancing, and focus on hand hygiene and face hygiene. Now, the news in detail. Parliament has passed the Jammu and Kashmir Reorganization Amendment Bill 2021. The Lok Sabha today gave the nod to the bill which seeks to merge the JNK cadre with the AGMUT cadre for All India Services. The bill had already been passed by the Rajya Sabha. Responding to the discussion on the bill, Home Minister Amit Shah said, the government wants to make Jammu and Kashmir self-reliant and emphasized that development will reach even the remotest areas. He stated that development of Jammu and Kashmir has been the top priority of Prime Minister Narendra Modi and a lot of development projects have been taken up in the UT. He said Panchayati Raj has been started in Jammu and Kashmir after the NDA government came to power. हमारे विरोधी भी आलोप नहीं कर सकते कि चुनाव में घपला हुआ इस चुनाव में अशांति हुई इस चुनाव में अफसर का उपयोग किया गया सब ने भय रहित होकर शांतिपूर्ण तरीके से मतदान किया है इक्यावन प्रतिशत मतदान पंचायत के चुनाव में हुआ है और जिन्होंने धारा 370 वापस लाने के आधार पर चुनाव लड़ा था वो साफ हो गए Mr. Shah said many of the JNK residents who did not receive electricity in the past 70 years got it in the past seven months. The Home Minister said the opposition is asking what the NDA government has done for Jammu and Kashmir since 2019. Rather, they should answer what they have done for Jammu and Kashmir in the last 70 years. He said the abrogation of Article 370 was for the benefit of the nation. Kashmir ki city ko hum samjhe. राजनीति करने के लिए ऐसा कोई बयान न दे जिससे जनता गुमराह हो जाए यहां कहा गया कि धारा 370 हटाने के वक्त जो वादे किए गए थे उसकी दिशा में क्या किया मैं तो जरूर इसका जवाब दूंगा 17 महीने हुए धारा 370 हटे हुए अब हमसे हिसाब मांग रहे हो 70 साल आपने क्या करा इसका हिसाब लेकर आए हो क्या और अगर 70 साल ढंग से चलाते तो हमसे हिसाब मांगने का समय ही ना आता the Home Minister further said the Jammu and Kashmir Reorganization Amendment Bill has nothing to do with the statehood of JNK and asserted that statehood will be given at the right time. In Parivaro ne jo vikas ko rock kar rakha hai, usko patri par chada kar, jaise hi uchit paristiti hogi, juru Jammu Kashmir ko puna rajya ka status vapis denge. Iska is bill se koi lenden nahi hai. Ye bill se Mr. Shah said the three families which ruled Jammu and Kashmir for 70 years have, not, have done nothing to develop the health sector or provide employment. He predicted that 25,000 government jobs will be given to the youth of Jammu and Kashmir before 2022. He said earlier, no major business house would invest in Jammu and Kashmir, but after Article 370 was revoked, many businessmen are investing in the UTs. Leader of Congress in Lok Sabha, Adhir Ranjan Chaudhary, said, the government showed a lot of dreams while bringing the bill, but Jammu and Kashmir has not returned to normalcy. TMC leader Saugat Roy asked what has been achieved after Jammu and Kashmir was turned into a union territory. He said development has come to a standstill in the place. 
एन के प्रेमचंद्रन ऑफ दी आर एस पी सॉट टू नो द रियल स्टेट ऑफ लॉ एंड ऑर्डर इन जम्मू एंड कश्मीर नाउ द ट्राइब्यूनल रिफॉर्म्स रैशनलाइजेशन एंड कंडीशन ऑफ सर्विस बिल टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी वन एंड द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन शेड्यूल्ड कास्ट ऑर्डर अमेंडमेंट बिल टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी वन वर इंट्रोड्यूस्ड इन लोकसभा टूडे लेटर लोकसभा स्पीकर अर्जन द हाउस टिल एथ ऑफ मार्च यूनियन फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर निर्मला सीतारमन हैज सेड द यूनियन बजट फॉर टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी वन ट्वेंटी टू हैज सेट द पेस फॉर इंडिया टू बिकम आत्मनिर्भर थ्रू द The finance minister was replying to the general discussion on the union budget in the Lok Sabha this morning. India to become atmanirbhar even after the pandemic and even as the pandemic is probably reviving in some countries because we had an approach which was very spearheaded from the front by the prime minister himself. We had a kind of retraction in the pandemic. The debt rates are the lowest in the world. Active cases have come down. We have actually managed to bend the curve, and as a result, the revival of the economy looks lots more sustainable. And this budget, therefore, gives the necessary impetus. Ms. Sita Raman added that reforms taken up by the government will lay the path for making India one of the top economies of the world. The finance minister said the government took the challenge as an opportunity and took steps for the long-term growth of the economy. Further, Ms. Sita Raman rejected the allegations of the opposition parties about the reduction in the budget allocation for various schemes. She said the budget provisions have been misread. Talking about the budget allocation made for various sectors, the minister said 1 lakh 15 thousand crore rupees have been transferred to more than 10 crore farmers under the Pradhan Mantri Kisan Samman Nidhi scheme. Ms. Sita Raman said allocation to the defence sector has been increased by 18.8 percent in comparison to previous allocation. She added that increase in capital expenditure will improve the demand for the core industries and generate the employment. She said the government has taken the holistic step for developing health infrastructure by making water and sanitation a key component of the health sector. The finance minister also rebutted the allegations of the opposition for helping the crony capitalists. She said the NDA government has taken the steps for the welfare of poor farmers, small and medium businesses who are not crony capitalists. She said poor people have benefited from various initiatives including Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Yojana, Pradhan Mantri Swanidhi Yojana and Pradhan Mantri Aawas Yojana. She said a total of 29.87 crore rupees have been provided under three atmanirbhar packages and Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Yojana. In a sharp attack on the Congress party's stand in the Lok Sabha during the discussion on the budget, the finance minister said it has become the tendency of the party to propagate false narratives and demean the sanctity of the constitutional bodies. She asserted that not a single agriculture produce marketing committee has been closed in the country and on the contrary, budget provisions have been made to provide assistance to the states to improve the infrastructure of the APMC. APMC desh bhar mein kai ये तीनों कानून आने के बाद बंद हुआ है क्या कहीं बंद नहीं हुआ मेरा एक्सपेक्टेशन के साथ अभी प्रश्न भी पूछ रही हूँ प्रूव इवन इफ वन एपीएमसी मन बी वो शट नॉट वन व शट ऊपर से बजट में प्रावधान किया गया है दैट थर्टी थाउजेंड क्रोस विच विल बी कलेक्टेड थ्रू दैट एग्रीकल्चरल डेवलपमेंट इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर सेट विल बी एक्चुअली बी गोइंग टू द स्टेट so that apmc infrastructure can be improved hum upar se fund bhi de rahe hain states ko apmc ka infrastructure badhane ke liye the rajya sabha concluded the first part of the budget session yesterday following the finance minister's reply to the discussion on the union budget in the upper house the rajya sabha recorded 99% productivity in the two week long part first part of the session the second part of the budget session will commence from the 8th of march Prime Minister Narendra Modi will visit Tamil Nadu and Kerala tomorrow. In Tamil Nadu, Prime Minister will hand over the state of the art Arjun main battle tank Mark 1A to the Indian Army at Chennai. More from our Chennai correspondent. 
The stage has been set for Prime Minister's visit to Chennai. Security has been beefed around the Chennai airport and also at arterial roads in the city. The venue of the meeting, the Jawaharlal Nehru Stadium, has come under tight security. At tomorrow's event, Prime Minister will hand over the Arjun Main Battle Tank MK-18 to the Indian Army. It is a unique tank designed and developed by Combat Vehicles Research and Development Establishment and DRDO along with 15 academic institutions. The special project has received an order for 118 such tanks by the Indian Army. Joy, A and News, Chennai. The Prime Minister will also inaugurate the Chennai Metro Rail Phase 1 extension and commission the passenger services from Washam and Pate to Wimko Nagar. He will also lay foundation stones for several projects and inaugurate the fourth railway line between Chennai Beach and Attipattu. In Kerala, Prime Minister Modi will dedicate to the nation the propylene derivative petrochemical project of Bharat Petroleum Corporation Limited. He will also dedicate to the nation the Roro vessels at Wellington Islands, Koche. The Prime Minister will inaugurate the International Cruise Terminal Sagrika at the Cochin port. He will also inaugurate the Marine Engineering Training Institute at Vigyan Sagar. In Uttarakhand, rescue and search operation for the 25 to 35 people still feared to be trapped inside the tunnel is going on. Rescue teams have successfully made way to another tunnel, which can give an idea about the trapped people. Let's go over live to our correspondent Sushil Chandra Tiwari, who is at Ground Zero, Tapovan Tunnel in Chamole, for the latest. Sushil, what updates do you have on the measures now being undertaken in the search and rescue operation? A Tanvi drilling work started at Tapovan NTPC site again with new and more powerful drilling machine this evening to expand the diameter of the hole which leads to another tunnel. And Tanvi rescue teams were able to reach this small tunnel which is beneath the present tunnel. And let me tell you that drone cameras are being used in the main tunnel to know the whereabouts of the trapped people and mucking from present tunnel is also in progress. There is one more thing, today rescue work started on another area which was actually a construction zone over the tunnel and where maximum number of workers were working at that time when the flash flood came. Because of the slush in huge volume and uh, it could be 40 feet in height. Uh, today by diverting the flow of the river an approach road is being prepared to that particular area so that bodies can be recovered. Tanvi? Yes, thank you Sushil for that update. The government today said that more than 80,52,000 beneficiaries have been vaccinated for COVID-19 till today across the country. Addressing media in New Delhi, Joint Secret Secretary in the Health Ministry, Dr. Mandeep Bhandari said, the second dose of COVID-19 vaccination started from today for beneficiaries who have completed 28 days after the receipt of first dose. The second dose beneficiaries, which is specific today, are 7,668. The vaccinations to the frontline workers till date are 21,17,179. Dr. Bhandari said more than 59 lakh health healthcare workers and over 21 lakh frontline workers have been vaccinated till date. He said Union Health Secretary today reviewed vaccination drive with all states and union territories. The Health Ministry said a total of 34 persons have been hospitalized after being administered the COVID-19 vaccine so far. This comprises 0.0004% of the total vaccinations. Of the 34 cases of hospitalization, 21 were discharged after treatment, while 11 persons died and two are under treatment. During the last 24 hours, no person has been hospitalized. The ministry said no case of serious or severe adverse event following immunization or death has been attributable to vaccination till date. Twelve states and union territories have vaccinated more than 70% of the registered healthcare workers. Meanwhile, the country's COVID-19 recovery rate has improved to 97.32% as a total of 11,395 patients recovered during the last 24 hours. The total number of recoveries has gone up to 1 crore 6 lakhs 625. World Radio Day is being celebrated across the globe today. 
The day was proclaimed by the member states of UNESCO in 2011 and was subsequently adopted by the United Nations General Assembly as an international day. According to UNESCO, radio is a powerful medium for celebrating humanity and constitutes a platform for democratic discourse. The theme of World Radio Day 2021 New World, New Radio will highlight the services rendered by the radio medium throughout the crisis. On this day, we fondly recall the legendary voice that enthralled the listeners of All India Radio News. Who can forget the baritone voice of iconic broadcaster Mr. Melville DeMello, who inspired many in the country to become voiceover artists and newsreaders. For present day listeners, we are now playing an audio clip reminiscing the voice of Mr. DeMello. Now as the flames begin to lick, a, a roar goes up from the crowd. Now the fire is caught, more pieces of candle wood are being played, garlands being flung into the air, policemen sticks being raised to try and keep the crowds down. We're trying to move in closer to get a last glimpse. Of the father of in Kerala, a series of discussions with the team of officials of Central Election Commission that reached Tiruvananthapuram to evaluate election preparedness on upcoming assembly polls is in progress. The team already had meetings with the state's chief electoral officer, Tika Ramina, police nodal officers and representatives from various political parties. You are listening to the evening news on All India Radio. Chalo, dil se ik shuruaat kare. Chalo, ik faisla aaj kare. Maat nahi to tokenge. Karo na ko rokenge. Chalo, ik raada kar diye hai. Chalo, khush raada kar diye hai. Maat nahi to tokenge. Karo na ko rokenge. Welcome back. You're listening to the Evening News. Now, here is a review of proceedings in Lok Sabha today. The writer is Kumar Rakesh of the PTI. Home Minister Amit Shah today asserted in the Lok Sabha that the Narendra Modi government has done more for Jammu and Kashmir since Article 370 was scrapped in August 2019 than those who ruled it for generations. Its development has been the top priority of the government, he said. Replying to a discussion on the Jammu and Kashmir Reorganization Amendment Bill 2021, Mr. Shah also slammed some opposition members for their claim that the proposed law negates the hopes of the region in getting back its erstwhile statehood. Later, the House passed the bill that seeks to merge Jammu and Kashmir cadre of the All India Services with the Arunachal Pradesh, Goa, Mizoram, Union Territory, AGMUT cadre. The Home Minister said the legislation has nothing to do with the statehood and Jammu and Kashmir will be accorded the status at an appropriate time. He said the centre made it a union territory to streamline the administrative machinery and push development works which had been stalled for decades. He said the region's union territory status is temporary and then took a swipe at Congress and other parties for backing the Article 370 that gave special status to Jammu and Kashmir, saying it was a temporary provision, but they continued it for over 70 years before the Modi government annulled it in August 2019. The Home Minister said Jammu and Kashmir has been a top priority for the current government since it took power in 2014. Decentralization and devolution of power have taken place in the Union Territory following the revocation of Article 370, Mr. Shah said, noting that Panchayat elections saw over 51% voting. The Panchayats have been given administrative and financial powers for local development, something they lacked earlier, he added. Now, people elected by the masses will rule Jammu and Kashmir and not those born to kings and queens, he said, attacking dynastic parties in the region. The Home Minister said even our rivals could not allege any wrongdoing in these polls which were conducted fairly and peacefully. The Home Minister said work on two aims in the region has begun and the Kashmir Valley will be connected to the railways network by 2022. He also gave the assurance to the people of Jammu and Kashmir that no one will lose their land. The government has sufficient land for development works, he said. 
the bill seeks to replace the ordinance to merge the Jammu and Kashmir cadre of civil services officers with the Arunachal Pradesh Goa Mizoram Union Territory AGMUT cadre. Mr. Shah said the government expects that around 25,000 government jobs will be created in Jammu and Kashmir by 2022. The Home Minister added, Panchayats have now been given the deciding power on 21 matters of development and also given over 1,500 crore rupees for carrying out development works. He said over 50,000 families have been covered under health insurance. The Prime Minister development packages, which was over 58,627 crore rupees, has been raised by a further 26%, he said. Almost every household has been provided power supply and more than 12 lakh women given cooking gas cylinders under the Ujwala scheme, he said. The Bahujan Samaj Party has supported the bill and lashed out at the Congress for its opposition to the government's measures that it said are in support of the poor, Dalits and other deprived communities in the Union Territory. Maluk Nagar of the BSP said the backward communities like Gujar and Bakarwal had been deprived of their rights in Jammu and Kashmir for long. He said they are now getting their due, a reference to the Modi government's move to roll out reservations for them in line with the national quota after the erstwhile states special status was revoked with the annulment of Article 370 of the Constitution in 2019. Mayawati-led BSP had also backed the government on its move to abrogate Article 370. Participating in the discussion on the bill, Mr. Nagar was spirited in support of the government and was equally strong in his criticism of the Congress, saying its leaders Rahul Gandhi and Priyanka Gandhi Vadra ate meals in poor households but opposed the centre's pro-poor policies. Mr. Nagar also mocked Rahul Gandhi for his speech during a discussion on the union budget, saying he delivered his address and then left as a professor does after giving a lecture to the students. The BSP is also in the opposition but is getting a bad name, he said, as the treasury benches repeatedly cheered at his remarks. What is the harm if good officers from other parts of the country serve Jammu and Kashmir, he asked, supporting the bill that seeks to replace the ordinance to merge the Jammu and Kashmir cadre of civil services officers with the Arunachal Pradesh, Goa, Mizoram, Union Territory, AGMUT cadre. T. Sumati Thangapandian of the TDMK opposed the bill, alleging that the government has imposed a host of draconian laws on the country. She asserted it is a serious blow to a state's rights. Satyapal Singh of the BJP said the proposed law will help the centre usher in all-round development of the union territory and push its full integration with the rest of the country. This will allow the government to punish those officers who do not act properly by transferring them outside. Professor Sagat Rai of the Trinamool Congress opposed the bill, saying it is against the principles of the Constitution. It will also affect the career prospects, prospects of the Jammu and Kashmir cadre officers, he said. He also spoke about the revocation of Article 370, wondering what it has brought to Jammu and Kashmir and noting that for the first time a state was reduced to the status of a union territory. Democratic rights of people were taken away, he said. Chinta Nuradha of the YSR Congress Party supported the bill and said it will allow the government to fill up the big deficiency of officers there besides boosting the development activities. Rajiv Ranjan Singh of the JDU supported the bill and took a dig at the opposition members who brought up the issue of revocation of Article 370. Whatever had, happened, had to happen was, has happened and there is no point raking it up now, he said, noting that his party had also not supported the measures then. Development is taking place at a fast pace in Jammu and Kashmir, he said. Earlier, introducing the bill, Minister of State for Home Affairs G. Kishan Reddy said that the government was working to take Jammu and Kashmir on the path to development. He said around 170 central laws are being implemented in Jammu and Kashmir after abrogation of Article 370 of the Constitution that gave a special status to the erstwhile state. He said the government is implementing different development projects and schemes in Jammu and Kashmir. Raising objections to the bill, Adhir Ranjan Chaudhary of the Congress questioned the need for bringing an ordinance for this. He said regularly promulgating an ordinance is not good for a parliamentary democracy as an ordinance should be preceded by an emergency situation or any urgency. Mr. Chaudhary said Jammu and Kashmir is a sensitive state and the cadre should be local and officers having ground knowledge should be appointed there. He alleged that militancy is still prevalent 
in the union territory and people are living in an atmosphere of fear. He said the government had promised to bring back Kashmiri Pandits to the Kashmir Valley but has failed to ensure their return. Opposing the bill, Hasnain Masoodi of JNKNC said the bill is akin to an assault on the people of Jammu and Kashmir. He said the government should restore the position of Jammu and Kashmir to that of prior to the 5th of August 2019. Finance Minister Nirmala Sita Raman hit out at Congress leader Rahul Gandhi, alleging that he is insulting the constitutional functionaries. Replying to the discussion on the union budget 2021-22, she said the former Congress chief was creating fake narratives but does not have patience to listen to replies on allegations levelled against the government. The minister said people need to recognize these two tendencies of the Congress party as this makes it clear that their belief in a democratically elected parliamentary system is completely finished. Responding to Rahul Gandhi's speech on Thursday, during which he talked about farm laws but declined to speak on the budget, the minister further said Mr. Gandhi laid the foundation but did not speak about the budget during the discussion on it. Ms. Sitaraman said she wanted Mr. Gandhi to speak on 10 issues but was disappointed as the Congress leader made no mention of them. She questioned the Congress party why it took a U-turn on the farm laws but no reply came. She said, adding that Mr. Gandhi did not tell us, tell the House why Congress governments in Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh did not waive farm loans as promised in their manifestos. She further said, Mr. Gandhi did not talk about the farmer's issue in Punjab where Congress is in power and the steps being taken by the government with regard to stubble burning. She said Mr. Gandhi also did not refer to any clause in the three farm bills which was against the farmers. In her reply to the discussion on the budget, she said the union budget 2021-22 has set the pace for India to become Atmanirbhar. Later, the Lok Sabha was adjourned after completion of the first leg of the budget session today. The Rajya Sabha was adjourned yesterday. Both the houses are now scheduled to meet on 8th of March for the second leg. That's all in the Parliament Review. Moving on, the ex-head of the European Central Bank, Mario Draghi, will be sworn in as the Italian Prime Minister today. He has secured the support of almost all the main political parties following the collapse of the previous administration last month. On to sports news now. In tennis, 20-time Grand Slam champion Spain's Rafael Nadal today defeated Britain's Cameron Norrie 7-5, 6-2, 7-5 to reach the fourth round of the Australian Open. He will now face Italy's Fabio Forgini next. In cricket, India were 300 for 6 against England at Stumps on the opening day of the second test match being played at the M. H. Chidambaram Stadium in Chennai. Rishabh Pant was batting on 33 and Akshar Patel on 5 when Stumps were drawn. While Rohit Sharma scored a superb innings of 161 runs, Ajinkya Rahane also contributed 67 runs. For England, Muin Ali and Jack Leach scouted two wickets each while Ollie Stone and Joe Root took one each. Moin Ali today became the first spinner to dismiss Indian skipper Virat Kohli for a duck in test cricket. Moin Ali bowled a stunning delivery and it turned to rattle the stumps of Virat Kohli for a duck. This is the 11th time that Kohli has been dismissed for a duck in tests. Earlier, India won the toss and opted to bat first. England lead the four-match series 1-0. Now let us take a look at the weather forecast for tomorrow. Delhi is likely to have dense fog. Temperature will hover between 12 and 28 degrees Celsius. Mumbai will have mainly clear sky. Minimum temperature will be around 18, while maximum is expected to be around 32 degrees. Chennai will have partly cloudy sky. The temperature will vary between 26 and 30 degrees Celsius. In Kolkata, there will be fog or mist in the morning and mainly clear sky later. Srinagar will have mainly clear sky as well. Temperature will hover between 0 and 14 degrees Celsius. Jammu will have mainly clear sky, becoming partly cloudy towards evening or night. Leh will have mainly clear sky again. Minimum temperature will be around minus 10 degrees Celsius, while the maximum will be around 6 degrees. Gilgit will have mainly clear sky. Temperature will hover between minus 2 and 19 degrees Celsius. Muzaffarabad will witness mainly clear sky. The temperature will hover between 6 and 21 degrees Celsius. In Hyderabad, the minimum temperature will be around 17 degrees Celsius, while the maximum will be around 31 degrees. Ahmedabad will have clear sky. Minimum temperature will be around 17, while maximum will be around 34 degrees Celsius. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Home Minister Amit Shah says... Centre wants to make Jammu and Kashmir self-reliant and development will reach even the remotest areas. 
फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर निर्मला सीतारामन सेज यूनियन बजट एज सेट द पेस फॉर इंडिया टू बिकम आत्मनिर्भर फर्स्ट लेग ऑफ बजट सेशन कंक्लूड्स बोथ हाउसेज ऑफ पार्लियामेंट टू रिकन्वीन ऑन एट ऑफ मार्च प्राइम मिनिस्टर टू विजिट तमिलनाडु एंड केरला टुमारो टू लॉन्च सेवरल डेवलपमेंट प्रोजेक्ट सेकेंड डोज ऑफ कोविड नाइन्टीन वैक्सीन एडमिनिस्टर्ड टू हेल्थ केयर वर्कर्स अक्रॉस द कंट्री वर्ल्ड रेडियो डे बींग सेलिब्रेटेड अक्रॉस द ग्लोब टूडे एंड इन क्रिकेट इंडिया वर थ्री हंड्रेड फॉर सिक्स अगेंस्ट इंग्लैंड एट स्टम्प्स ऑन डे वन ऑफ द सेकेंड टेस्ट मैच इन चेन्नई रोहित शर्मा स्कोर वन हंड्रेड एंड सिक्सटी वन एंड विद दैट वी एंड द इवनिंग न्यूज फ्रॉम ऑल ऑफ इस गुड नाइट